My name is Isaiah Montgomery, Jr. I'm 68 years old, uh, born June 17, 1949 in Perry, Florida, in an area uh, in a division called Colored Town. My name is Sarah Hall. I'm 82 years old. I was born in Perry on what is now called Homer Smith Avenue. At the time, it was called Sawana Avenue. I've lived in Perry all my life. Went to school in Perry, Jerkins High School. When I started school, it was the old Jerkins High School from K through 12. That school burned down. And we began to go to school in churches. We had classes at a little uh, restaurant that was, it was a Bob, it's now a Bobby shop, but it was owned by O.B. Glenn, the Glenn family. And then we went to a building that now stands. Uh, we had classes there, and it's owned by the McLeod family. I attended, uh, we called it Jerkins High School, but it was a K-12, uh, really a one through 12 uh, school site. Uh, in 1956, I believe. Uh, at that time, uh, the principal was Howard Warner. Um, uh, my first grade teacher was a person, a uh, teacher named Sarah Hood. And uh, when I got to seventh grade, uh, we had a concept that has come back around where you would have a teacher assigned to you in seventh grade, which was Richard Bell Jr. And that person would follow you all the way to 12th grade. So from seventh grade to 12th grade, uh, Mr. Richard Bell Jr. was my, uh, what we call homeroom teacher. Jerkins was an exciting place, uh, caring teachers, loving teachers. Uh, the non-instructional staff was just as involved as the instructional staff. And uh, it was a place where we felt real good about ourselves. Remembering schooling at Jerkins was that we had dynamic teachers, teachers who were concerned about the whole child, um, educationally, physically, and spiritually. And I happened to be a cheerleader for the football team, and I, was, I played varsity basketball. I had to get documentation for my children to believe that I played on the varsity team because I'm so short. But uh, I did play with the varsity team. We traveled all around the Big Bend area playing basketball and football. And our band won numerous awards. Very good band, headed by Mr. Bailey. Uh, in basketball and football, uh, our coaches were uh, Sam DeTerno, we called him uh, Chief and uh, Mr. Richard Bell, John Green, and uh, Otto Strickland, I believe. Uh, but Jerkins uh, started football in 1952, the record I'm talking about with uh, Sam Turner. And I believe Jerkins closed in 1970. And he may have had one losing season uh, and the other seasons, they were either champs, co-champs, two or three seasons in the late 60s, they were uh, undefeated. Perfect, perfect, perfect record. So we had, we had a, a real good, exciting football team. I don't remember, we didn't have tennis, we didn't have golf, we didn't have uh, some of the sports that are there now. We didn't have Tile <laughs> Nine. Uh, so we were limited to pro those primary sports. Uh, in the band program, as, as Ms. Sarah said, uh, Henry Bailey came to Jerkins. The, the band was started and then it kind of went down and then it was uh, reinstituted. Uh, what happened is that Ms. Laura Scott Reeves uh, headed up a committee of teachers, community people to raise the money to purchase instruments. We probably had a 75-piece band 
and the community purchased those instruments. Um, uh, after the instruments were purchased and the board hired Mr. Uh, Henry Bailey, I was around sixth grade, and uh, later money was raised to uh, purchase uni uniforms um, uh, at, at Jerkins. Uh, so we went to contest, we played all, we went to all the football games, both home and uh, away. Uh, when Jerkins and the, the system was changing, moving from segregated to integrated schools, um, two or three of my classmates were the first blacks to go to Taylor County High School. Adolph Hill, uh, Rudolph Hill, uh, Walter Thorpe, and uh, uh, there was another young lady, I can't call her name right now, were the students who first went over to, to Taylor County High School. Um, I would imagine I'm talking about 66, 1966, somewhere in that, in that area. I finished in 67. But there was a period when the money for athletics kind of dried up um, uh, and we stopped playing basketball at Jerkins. We had a basketball team, but all of our games were away from Jerkins, away from Taylor County. And we traveled in uh, the coach's automobiles. <laughs> um, we had a clay basketball court, uh, which was enclosed by 10. And uh, our heating system was, <laughs> what, 100 gallon drums, five barrels, we call them now. Red hot heater. And red hot and heater. Red hot. And uh, we played, uh, our uniforms were just like they are now. We, we played in uh, the typical uh, uniform of basketball player. Uh, so we, but we, we enjoyed that, but, but uh, uh, we did not finish uh, basketball at our site at Jerkins because of just, I'm assuming, uh, budget drying up athletics. But that did not stop the, the spirit of the students and, uh, and the players in being involved in the, uh, in the basketball program. And uh, the children, the, the maypole plaiting at that time was a traditional thing. That was one of the enjoyment. Most of the kids that went during that time can always remember plaiting the maypole. So that was a fun day. Um, we enjoyed going to school, even though we had to walk. When the buses came along, my, my kid, we were out. But we had to walk to school. And we had a principal that let you know that being late was not an excuse. Uh, rainy weather was not an excuse. Cold weather was not an excuse. If you were supposed to be there at 8.30, you were there in the school. Um, mine would be going to church because I grew up going to church from Sunshine Band area, Junior Red Circle, and then on up to the mission, the adults, singing in the choir. This was the time that you had a chance to say your Easter speeches and be in your Christmas plays. So it's always had been a lot of activity at the church that would keep you, keep a child entertained during my time. And even now, they are still carrying on some of the things that we did when we were young. Um, everybody in the community, more or less, took care of the children. There were, what impressed me when I was young, that all of the black businesses down in the uh, Brooklyn area, most of them were landowners, and uh, they were business people and they supplied their family, took care of the needs of their families. There was not plenty of uh, extra arms like they are now, like food stamps and uh, low income apartments and such, which is very good. But those people, the, even the smallest cafe, uh, the beauticians at their beauty parlors, the little, uh, 
recreational places that we used to call a halfway in or a two way in, they took care of their families. Family was very important. That was their first priority. Born in the area of Center Street called Color Town, um, earliest memory is moving to the East Main location uh, uh, in a new house. We lived with our, our grandparents, my mom, my, my grandparents, and uh, uh, four siblings, an uh, older brother and three sisters. So my earliest remembrance is, is moving to that house. Um, I can remember uh, my granddaddy uh, having a portrait made of, of, of him, I remember that, and uh, I have that one in my foyer at home now. Um, uh, uh, I remember spending a lot of time with him. He was a, uh, he was a barber, he was a, a farmer, um, a masonry person, concrete finisher, and we did a lot of landscaping where you quilt the yards now, we would take the grass, put it apart, and sprig it and then it would run across. I remember doing a lot of hands-on and personal time working with my, with my grandfather. Um, we had animals, we had some horses. Uh, we had one that wouldn't work. <laughs> he would buck. I remember we had the, uh, uh, the zoning didn't forbid it back in those days, so we had a horse area, a fenced-in area behind the house. And, uh, Somehow or another, me and a friend of mine, we rode the horse back into the enclosure and he went to, he went to bucking on us. Um, the, the other, uh, grew up with a bunch of boys in our community, probably um, 10 or 12 of us. Um, uh, I can remember all of us were either raised by our grandparents our grandfathers, grandmothers, uh, I can remember um, probably one family uh, in the community where the mom and dad and the kids were there together. But um, we had all kinds, of, we made all of our toys. We made, uh, we made the pop gun out of the china berry tree and so forth. Uh, we made our bows and our arrows and we took uh, wire hangers and made the little spears that sometimes we shot each other with. I can remember, uh, <laughs> I might not want to tell that one, but we used to have uh, clubs and we had uh, clubhouses, but our clubhouses were beneath the ground, 10, 12 feet beneath the ground, sometimes 14 by 14 wide. We literally dug with our hands, hand tools, and we had letters where we actually went down and they were covered over. God bless the same man. Uh, and we had another one. This one was behind our house and we had another one in an area uh, that was even bigger than, than that one. So we were, we did a lot of things that um, I would not allow my kids to do. <laughs> um, we would, uh, we would make paper bag boxing gloves and we would actually box and hit each other. We played football in the street. It was a dirt road. We played football. We had community competition. Uh, Colored Town had a, f a football team, a baseball team. The country, we call it, had a football team, baseball team over in Brooklyn area. Now they had the, the Lotris Park field, so they had a good field. But in every community, we had our own baseball diamond that we built and cleaned off ourselves. We had one in East Perry, we had one in front of the practice football field. We had a baseball diamond there. Um, I don't know if you know Reverend Chester Dents, but his house, where his house sits, that was a baseball diamond. Over here in the area we call Colored Town, off from the Boys and Girls, the old Boys and Girls Club where it's fenced in now, that was the Colored Town. Uh, baseball field. So we had we had community competition, and uh, um, uh, uh, I can remember one time our particular team played the uh, the city baseball team, which was adults, 
and my my uh, uh, my brother um, was running the bases, and when he got to home plate, he slid in. The plate was lifted up, and his kneecap got caught up under it, and uh, I can remember running from. Lostridge Park area down to the place we call the drugstore, Scott and Allen drugstore, to uh, to call home to tell my mom that that he was that he was injured. Um, on our team, we had a pitcher named Johnny O'Howell, and we really didn't have to do anything but sit down because he was striking. He was striking, <laughs> striking everybody out. No, nobody could hit him. So that, that, those were fun days, and and. Uh, and like I said, we, 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 played, we played football as well. Now, we didn't have competition football. We just had local football within our, with our, within our community. Ping pong, we made our own ping pong tables. Uh, we, played, we played ping pong. Um, basketball courts. Um, we had our own basket. Each community had their own basketball court. Over here on Green Street, um, Sam Turner lived in this area. So we had... Uh, volleyball court that we that we made ourselves. So we 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 would come together and create our own recreation. We make our own toys. We made our own fun. And then on on the weekends, uh, parents would let us get together, and we would walk over to Brooklyn and go to the uh, go to the theater. And after the theater, we would walk back home. Um, a little later, my grandfather he. Uh, he purchased uh, uh, automobiles. <laughs> I remember one we had, it was um, a Plymouth. We called it a rag top because it was a rag top. <laughs> <laughs> but we would drive that car over and every kid that lived in East Perry would jump in there somehow or another to make it uh, back home. Uh, white wall tires, uh, we either painted them or we had the false attachment where you could break the tire down and put it on and blow it back up. So we, we, had, we had a good time doing those kinds of things. And then the community looked out for us. We lived, there was an elderly lady in the community named uh, Daisy Miller, elderly lady. Uh, we were latchkey kids. So when we got home from school, we were, we were home by ourselves, but she always would watch out for us. Uh, at Christmas time, we, my parents purchased us a gym set swings and the uh, seesaw we called it and the seesaw had the crossbars that you held on to and they were safe as long as the uh, cover was on the bars uh, we had pulled them off and lost the covers and this particular afternoon after school i turned to flip and as i turned to flip i hit the bar and cut myself on this side here open and the lady named Miss Daisy Miller, who lived across the road, elderly lady, probably in the 70s, um, uh, uh, came over and got me, her, her and her son got me, put me on her sofa, and, and uh, took care of me until my parents got home. I think she used some snuff and some spider webs and some other home remedies to, uh, to uh, take care of me. And, uh, I don't remember seeing a lot of blood, but it must have been. But she took care of me. I don't remember going to the doctor. I may have Dr. Baker, uh, Dr. Green, and back in those days, they made home, they made home home visits. We had trip around the world as kids, uh, hay rides. We would go to the various communities. We would go out to uh, what we call uh, well, Foley in that community out there. We would go to Color Town. And there would be houses de designated that we would stop on, uh, stop to, and they would always have a snack provided for us. Um, we used to have activities at the church, like leap year activities, where we would uh, uh, come together as boys and girls and, and maybe have a, a dinner or a birthday party or something like that at the church as well. Black owned businesses, uh, there were two to three, uh, two at one time fuel parlors. Uh, Evans was one. Then we had Walk um, Miles Fuel Home. 
until Tillman came along. Uh, we had the drugstore. We had Bob, Richard Bell Bobby Shop was right in the hub of the business area because next to that was a little uh, cafe owned by H.M. Johnson, who was also one of our taxi cab owners. Uh, then there was a beauty shop by Jamie Baskin. Uh, further down, we had a little shop that the teenagers could go to called Halfway In. Across from there was the movie. So we had a chance to go to the movie. Prior to that, when I was a teenager, we went to the movies downtown with the whites. They would sit uh, at the bottom and we would sit at the top. Um, there were no TVs at that time, naturally, and only very few radios. So that was part of our main activity was to go to the movie. We also had other restaurants in the Brooklyn area. We had uh, several more barber shops and beauty parlors in that area. But it was always something that was going on that would, you know, put some life in the community. The thing I remember most that the little cafes that they called Jooks at the time, teenagers didn't go, children didn't go there. You would get to the door and they would politely ask you who you're looking for. And that's far as you got. And if any of your relatives was in there, they'd get them for you. But we were not allowed to go. It didn't bother us either because we went to the ones that we were allowed to and we enjoyed that. And we, we were happy kids. It wasn't as much depression and bitterness and runaways as it is now. I, I realize this is a different era, but I'm glad that I grew up in that area because it taught me some values about having good character, uh, making choices, not having to follow the crowd. I was raised by a grandmother, and uh, one of the things that, if we told her everybody's doing it, we knew that we weren't gonna get to do that because her motto, but you're not going to do it. So. That was a beautiful era to grow up in. And I tried to bring my kids up with the same kind of discipline and structure that there is good and there's bad, and you have to make the choice. You're responsible for the choices you make. <laughs> I would say to the uh, younger people who come here or who are born here, first of all, know who you are. Be proud of who you are. Get your, keep your priorities in front of you. Uh, make sure that while you're building a physical body, that you be a character, and that you uh, build a healthy body, take care of yourself. You don't have to follow the crowd. Find your own identity and stay focused. Obey your parents. Uh, when you go to school, work, that's, what you, that's where you're going now, to work. Uh, have, a, have a goal and a vision of, of what you want to be and strive to be that. And that uh, Taylor County is not a bad place to live and work. The difference is that when I was growing up, I was influenced by the community. We live in an information age now. Our kids are no longer influenced by the community. They're, they're influenced by the, glo by the world, uh, and, and uh, their sites are more global. And that's, that's, not, that's not bad, but you have to start where you are, uh, uh, and then take all that you see and experience, but come back and personalize it and, and develop you, and, and then don't leave out having a relationship with, with the Lord. I was born and raised in Taylor County educated in Taylor County. I do a lot of traveling, I love to travel, but I'm very proud that I live in Taylor County. Life is what you make it. You have to work at it. Sometimes we don't always uh, follow the goals that we plan, because I had other plans in life, but I just took the one that I had and did the best I could with it, and I don't think I did too bad.